Hi everyone, my name is Caroline. I'm a family nurse practitioner and one of your instructors here at SMNP Reviews. And today we are doing a quick overview of the brand new 2025 ACC AHA Hypertension Guidelines and how they compare to the old 2017 version. What you actually need to know for your board exam and also how to use these changes in your real world practice. Now, just to be clear, we are not talking about the older J and C8 guidelines here, just the ACC AHA guidelines. And the new guidelines are very detailed. I definitely recommend giving them a read before you enter clinical practice. But for today, let's focus on the most important takeaways. Okay, quick knowledge check. Take a look at these blood pressure categories. Did they change? Nope, they did not. They actually stayed the same as our previous 2017 categories. So if you've already memorized those numbers for your exam, you are good to go. And the basic treatment plan still holds. So for stage one, you got it. We'll start with those lifestyle modifications and maybe medication depending on risk. And stage two, we are definitely talking meds at this point. No surprises here. Now let's talk about what did change, especially around how we assess risk and make treatment decisions for our stage one and stage two patients. So first up, we have officially said goodbye to the ASCVD risk score in clinical care. As a quick refresher, the ASCVD score estimated a person's 10 year risk of a heart attack or stroke based on factors like age, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and also smoking history. So if a patient with stage one hypertension had an ASCVD score of greater than or equal to 10%, that's when you would add medication to the lifestyle plan. Well, in 2025, that is out. The PREVENT calculator is in. So here are a few points about the PREVENT calculator and what makes it an upgrade. So it works for patients age 30 to 79, it predicts total CVD, ASCVD, and heart failure risk, not just stroke and MI. It includes more detailed data like the A1C, albuminuria, and social determinants of health. And you get both the 10-year and the 30-year risk projections. It's much more comprehensive. Now, if you are watching this in 2025 and you're studying for your boards, Know that boards have not quite caught up to all of this yet. So for now, if you're prepping for that certification exam, take a deep breath, stick with the ASCVD-based thresholds and your test logic. The switch to prevent is going to be important in your clinical practice, but not yet for the exam. So don't throw out that knowledge on ASCVD risk cutoffs just yet. So the 2025 guidelines don't just tweak lifestyle modifications, they push us to act earlier and to think more proactively about risk. So for sodium, the general goal is still gonna be less than 2,300 milligrams per day, but less than 1,500 milligrams per day is now going to be the ideal target. For alcohol, total avoidance is going to be considered optimal. For timing, so if lifestyle changes haven't helped stage one hypertension after three to six months, they recommend to go ahead and consider medication. The reasoning here is because blood pressure control may help prevent cognitive decline in dementia, which is a huge long-term benefit. And there's also more guidance on pregnancy-related hypertension and when to screen for secondary causes like primary aldosteronism. Now, pop quiz question for you here. Why might we screen for albuminuria now in all patients with hypertension? That's right, because albuminuria is a marker of target organ damage. And identifying it early can prompt earlier use of medications like ACE inhibitors or ARBs to help protect kidney function and reduce cardiovascular risk. Okay, this next one just makes sense. We already know that for many patients, combining two lower dose medications works better and causes fewer side effects than just maxing one out. So the new guidelines now officially say to start with combination therapy for stage two hypertension, especially if that blood pressure is way above goal. 
Specifically, things like fixed dose combos like lisinopril, hydrochlorothiazide are a great way to improve adherence, which is also emphasized in this update. All right, let's bring it back to what you all want to talk about, your exam. So if you're prepping for boards right now, here is what I would remember. The boards take time to update, so you will probably see ASCVD risk in your questions if you are watching this video in 2025 or even 2026. The boards are not trying to trick you with the new guidelines that haven't been officially integrated. Focus on your core hypertension principles, the blood pressure rages, the first line medications, those lifestyle interventions, and how to manage stage one versus stage two. But if you're a practicing nurse practitioner and watching this video, this is your nudge to start learning about and using that prevent calculator. Get more aggressive with early lifestyle support and do not hesitate to start combination medication in those high risk stage two patients. Here are my references for today. And I want to quickly shout out some of our resources here at SMNP Reviews. You can check out our full board prep courses at npreviews.com and don't forget about our Facebook group for future nurse practitioners. It is a great space to get support and stay connected. And we also have a very helpful Instagram page. The handle is at SMNP Reviews Official, so be sure to give us a follow. We post regularly with tips just like in this video and lots of practice questions. I know that hypertension guidelines can sometimes feel like a lot, but the 2025 updates are really about personalized care, early action, and long-term protection, especially for heart and brain health. So whether you're studying for boards or seeing patients in a clinic, this topic is not going anywhere. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and we will see you soon for another video. Until next time.